what Jesus did on the cross. Now you may ask, you know, well, what about faith? You know, aren't we saved by our faith? Uh, that's why I like this verse in Ephesians. Uh, it's, it's clear. It says, we are saved by grace through faith. So it is God's grace that saves, but faith is the way you receive God's grace or God's salvation. And when you put your faith in Christ, remember that it is actually God's grace that saves you, although you receive it by faith. Uh, it is not your faith that sacrificed itself on the cross. It is Jesus. And another thing is your own faith, that is also actually a gift from God. It is not even from yourself. You did not have faith on your own unless God changed your hearts and transformed you. In terms of the way the original grammar works in verse 8, believe it or not, verse 8 actually means that both grace and faith are not of your own doing. They are both gifts from God. Now, maybe some people might ask, now how much faith do you need? I mean, there's some Christians, they have big faith, some have little faith, but Jesus says that all you need to begin with is faith as small as a mustard seed. That's, that's a very tiny seed. That's all you need because it is the Holy Spirit that makes your faith effective so that you can receive God's grace. You can try to develop and exercise your faith, but your faith can be a saving faith only because of God's Spirit. I want to mention again the man who I visited at the cardiac care unit in Lexington, Kentucky. He accepted Christ as Lord and Savior uh, a week before he died, um, but during his final week, he didn't have much time to learn more about Jesus. He didn't have any time to serve God in church or love his neighbor, although he should have prayed for them. He had no time to live a moral and righteous life since he stayed in bed and eventually became unresponsive. He had no chance to earn his salvation. Instead, if he was saved, he was saved by the grace of God through whatever amount of faith that he exercised when he accepted Jesus as he was laying on his ICU bed. Um, there was a similar situation in the story of Jesus concerning the thief on the cross. Uh, remember that story? He was crucified next to Jesus because he was a criminal. He had no more time to go to church and do good works. Uh, he had no more time to study the Bible. Instead, by faith, he asked Jesus to remember him when Jesus goes back to heaven in his kingdom. Then Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Even the salvation of the thief was by grace of God through faith. So we are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Um, in a way, don't you see the wisdom of God in that? Um, if being saved is about earning merit, or, but being good or intelligent or dedicated, then I don't know who's going to be saved. Uh, that's because there's always someone nicer. There's always someone smarter. There's always someone much better than you, much better than me. And whoever that person is, there's always someone even better than that person. Um, so, you know, what's the criteria? I mean, who can we say? How much good we need to do as opposed to doing bad? You know, and, and how do we keep track of all that? You know, if you're neurotic like me, you're like, ah, I have to come up with this list just to make sure uh, I'm, I'm better, than, uh, better than nice instead of uh, the other way around. But the, the good news is that we don't have to figure it out because our salvation is a gift. It only comes from God so that no one can boast about who is better and who is not. What the Bible is telling us is that in terms of salvation, we cannot boast about ourselves. Because in reality, we're all equal under or at the foot of the cross. No matter what we've done, who we are and what we bring to it, we are all equal. We are equal in our sin, equal in our need for grace, and we are equally loved in the eyes of God. 
Um, I got permission, I had to get permission from Jill to tell the story. Uh, because the story is about her Aunt Marilyn in Minnesota. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Aunt Marilyn, uh, she suddenly died and the Jill and I attended her funeral. Uh, she, was, she was still young, uh, I'd say about her 60s. Uh, Aunt Marilyn was someone who identified as a Christian and she belonged to this local church up in northern Minnesota. Uh, so her pastor did this memorial service. Uh, one thing I liked about the funeral sermon is that the pastor, um, he was very honest. Uh, because the reality is there is really the, weren't that many good things that you can say about Aunt Mary. Uh, she was actually quite a, a nasty person. Uh, uh, any of you among here have aunts or uncles that are nasty? Um, Any one of you willing to admit that? Or are you the nasty aunt and uncle? <laughs> Either way, I think regardless of where you're at, I mean, I think you can relate. Um, aunt Marilyn, you know, she used to tell nasty gossip about people. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, or true or false, she used to do that. Uh, she was a rebel. You know, she always did things her way, even if it was inappropriate. She tried to be controversial in everything, from religion to politics or, or other things. And she tried to find ways to say inappropriate things, uh, even in church, especially in church. She wanted to do that. Um, to be fair, we knew that she had a rough and difficult life, uh, and she didn't have many friends. So perhaps, you know, she actually could have been worse. Um, and personally, I've known her to be funny and sweet. Uh, but the pastor, um, she, he didn't sugarcoat anything. Uh, there really weren't any good things he was able to say about her for her memorial service. And the congregation knew it too, so he couldn't just lie and make things up. So in his sermon, the pastor used the verse here in Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. <clears throat> the pastor then said that he can take comfort in knowing that whether Aunt Marilyn was saved or not, it didn't depend on her goodness or her badness or nastiness. If she was saved, she was saved by the grace of God, which she received as a gift because she certainly did not earn it. If she trusted and believed in Jesus, we can really see the glory of God, because she can never boast that she would save herself. It is only because of God that we will see her in heaven. It is only by God's grace that a sinner like her can step into heaven and hear Jesus' words, enter into the joy of your Master. So after hearing that sermon, I was truly amazed by the grace of God. And not only because I thought that it was possible that a sinner like Aunt Marilyn would be in heaven, but that it's also possible that a sinner like myself may someday see her. Aunt Marilyn's memorial service, in a way, reminded me of my own sinfulness and how flawed I am. But at the same time, it reminded me of how amazing God's grace is. How amazing that God gave me grace. I'm reminded of a comment uh, Tim Keller once said about the gospel. Uh, Tim Keller once said that the gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared believe. And yet at the same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. Will you please join me in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, it is by your grace that you created us. It is your grace that saved us. And your grace that gave us life and an eternal future. We cannot boast of coming to faith in you because of our goodness, our talents, and other qualities, or even because our parents 
and grandparents are Christians. We are saved Christians only because of your grace we did not earn. Lord, we place our faith in you, our faith and trust in you, no matter how big or small. We place our faith in you and what your Son has done on the cross. We repent or turn away from our sins and instead turn to your Son, Jesus, and to your Word in living out our Christian life. Thank you for your gift of eternal life that we just received by faith. We ask that your spirit of salvation change us and move us in our hearts and minds in ways we never thought possible. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. English hymn number 408, I Surrender All. Please sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please sing verses 1, 2, and 4.